two years ago, he came to me. That's what he said, that he was head hunting. He was a bit different from those people. Huh? He was overly, overly familiar. I couldn't help but smile crookedly. I could easily imagine that. When he came to see me, he was clearly different from all those other people who would do me worthless things. His attitude. He shook it. She shook her head. He had a dream. Her jet black eyes looked at me. Even with personality how it was, it seemed a weakness for dreams hadn't changed even now. He had gone on and on about his dreams. Not the same way you do, though. So he was confident about it, huh? Yes. I meant it as a self deprecating joke. I was a little wounded, but she agreed. But thinking back, I realised how much courage it took me to talk about my dreams back then. If I had to pinpoint the moment I fell in love with Agana, it's probably when she stayed with me without mocking my dream. I thought his plan was utterly preposterous, but I realised it was only the first week requisite that made me think that way. The clap was about ABS? Yes. But it did actually happen, and I thought everything would almost go according to, the, to his plan. Also, it's a decisive flaw of a project Chris created. I still don't understand how man's no good at math could tell. A flaw? It's different in how you see the world. You can say that Gauss fooled Newton into bankruptcy. What? Most random f physical phenomena are distributed according to a normal distribution. Normal distribution is also called a Gaussian distribution after its discover. Gaussian distribution is commonly used in ma method in mathematical models. However, we learn through experience that everything follows normal distribution. I didn't understand what she said, but it seemed like Hagan had also had some grounds into revisioning with claps of ABS. And Barton had seen through his first rate flare and observation. There's one thing I wasn't sure of what people would opt to prioritise. I can understand that. Like the old story about a fire and movie theatre. Huh? As I explained it to Hagana, she nodded and resumed her own explanation. Looking at past presidents, we figured that even if people are not rational, they'll prioritise profits over than their own. Recently, I felt from that quite felt that from Clive's quite close up. Even when knowing where I bring profits, I could call them just DJ Rockberg. Boss dares resolved to sell their company, and those people would probably be sung at the series of lunar surface for a long time. So, what was Barton's dream? As Esther, her gun looked embarrassed. She put her hands between her knees, seemed to be having a hard time speaking. So, you still have something embarrassing to say after all. Even after all the fussing, yelling, and stupid misunderstandings and assumptions. And apologies, done eight years late. There was still something she was embarrassed about. I couldn't even imagine what it was. And then Hagana spoke. To protect the lunar surface. What? How is that Barton's dream? You were taken aback, I was taken aback. I kind of was looking at me embarrassed. Maybe it's considered embarrassment, but even though it was rare for her. I kind of continued her explanation. Emerald Industries is too big. It's in charge of way too much of the infrastructure on the lunar surface. Something bad was ever to happen to it. There was nothing on the lunar surface that could replace it. That's why that man said he could live because he had lunar surface in his playground. And to protect lunar surface, he could not leave any more industries in its current state. It sounded rather cheesy, but when Barton was totally capable of spouting lies like that. He was a man who had several names and family registers. He could freely manipulate huge amounts of money. If it was possible for him to have an insatiable desire even now, what could he be beside for, success for the sake of success? There was no difference between his type of obsessive gamblers. People who could only feel joy in the process of attaining something, rather than what they obtained. That was exactly what I felt I could 
Somehow I can't understand a part of plight of its kind. World of finance, starting with a stock market. Now I'd want to earn so much money when I ended up thinking how I could realise any dream. But that's all there was to it. In the end, with a sum I paid for Ghana, I'm sorry it could only allow you to earn money. It seemed like a market held the answer to destiny, would never ever give it to you. You were knowing this, the one would want a place you could believe was shared a dream. Barton's words were probably a bare truth and no lies. So, when Barton bought up Emerald Industries, he planned upon splitting it up. That's what he said. Once it split into several divisions, he was planning on raising rival companies. Sound completely preposterous here, it makes sense. It was obvious, looking at the fuss caused by the medical report. There were lifeboats, but not enough for everyone to get on board. If there was demand, it stands to reason there must be supply. So if we talk Barton about doing the surface being on the brink of collapse, there's a chance he might help us, right? I muttered thinking about how to bring this to him. Eight years ago, I went to Barton about the childish deal I'd come up with about my innocent mind. Amazingly, Risa talked to me about a similar deal and I refused her. He probably wouldn't agree if it was just the extension of that thinking. I had just this deal so Barton would feel like he had something to gain by listening to our story. There's one thing though. What? I got a scrunched her face, seemingly knowing I was going to tell her. You think it'd be okay if your plan failed, right? Hagana plotted to make the lunar surface collapse, but failing in that endeavour would conversely mean success for Barton's plan. If her plans were the same by being different? She scowled and turned me away. It's been hard, hard to hold in. So hard it could have torn her in half. Holding his contradictory emotions in her heart, yet Hagana took part in Barton's project. She was by no means a cold hearted person. She probably felt emotions so strongly she couldn't handle them properly. I'm sorry. For what? Four years ago, when I was at my most well known, I could have called out to you. Eleanor seemed to be convinced that I could do just that. But then, at the end of a movie about Alan's defeat, would have been really different. She glared at me. Why didn't you? I could only scratch my head in embarrassment. I was too busy. She looked at me with scorn. Then she heaved a small sigh. You haven't changed at all in eight years. I think I'm different now. That smile on her guy's face is wonderful. If I was the same as I was back then, I probably wouldn't be able to talk to you now. What do you mean? I just think I would have been more focused on pressing you for details about a plan from telling you how I feel. Are you stupid? That's for Hagana we know and love. If I was stupid, I wouldn't have been able to calm down and talk to you. Still, my priority had been lunar surface of the first half is the whole mess. That must have been the source of my frustration. She looked at me before even averting her eye gaze. I think you're an idiot. Her face and profile was cute. I couldn't help but laugh. Seems like the lunar surface is in trouble. Seems like it's a lie. It's not a lie. She answered up right she was. She didn't remember at once what she'd done. She looked at me with uneasy eyes. I know. That's why you're going to tell me about last bit you're having so much trouble saying. I want you to tell me all the details about positions you're hogging. For a moment, it looked like Hagana might cry, but she took a deep breath and gave me a key to Pandora's box. After listening to all of what Hagana had to say, I realised how far we'd come. The uproar surrounding the destiny of the people living on the outer districts eight years ago involved less than a million moors. The number that came out of Hagana's mouth went far beyond thousands of times of that. How much was it? Xanaka was seated at a desk in his office. He couldn't even swallow, it was so tense. We were predicting the losses totaling 8 trillion moles. It's only what we can calculate at this point. It's what we have. So does this mean the losses we have a chance of getting even bigger? We're only ABS and CDO in protection and theory. There's not a limit to the losses. 
everything collapsed, the securities were turned into paper scraps. Instead of having to make insurance payments, it was much as worth as much as insecurities. Why you make why you say it makes me want to go Oh is that all? But he got himself to be scared of that kind of money. Why don't we come along with Stacia? Said those words in an even tone. To this point he'd probably reached a stage where he felt genuine admiration. Marco and his mouth agape. Dumbfounded and Gazanica mass massaging the inner corners of his eyes. So, how do we zoo for this monster's the economy create losses going far beyond that? Shouldn't we be applying for the Guinness bucket at this point? They plan out another stage and another trap. I spoke. Trying not to remember a shock when I first heard Hagana talk about the hotel. If someone other than Hagana had said it, I'd think my spirits would have been broken. My spirit did not break because Hagana herself was on the verge of having hers break when she told me. We are doing large scale option transactions involving currency. Currency? Options? Zanika asked back, scrunching his face. Any station Marco didn't seem to fully measure the true meaning of his word. Only Wallace looked at me when I said this, utter disbelief in his face. An option is used to bet on whether or not the price will go up above a certain value at a certain point in the future. For instance, you predict how much the value of a mall prize will rise against a dollar three months from now, and you turn up either a profit or a loss. Hmm, I can sort of hazard a guess, so what of it? Until that medical report came out, the lunar surface economy was going swimmingly. In other words, this was a situation in which the currency of the lunar surface was getting stronger and stronger, compared to the currencies of any other country on Earth. Yeah, I understand that. Thanks to that, the price of imported products would drop. It would become easier for people to live. But in turn, it was meant to release that price of oils without limits. It's meant that back then, when you had some incentive to bet on the fact that more would get stronger, conversely, this also meant you could predict a collapse in the future. Please take advantage of this flaw. Sorry, but my brain's not working. What does that mean? I took a deep breath before speaking. In a situation where more's value would keep rising in the future, an option would be grant profile where more has drops of no value. Well, I suppose, but there are some people who think more will lose value. You can sell these options to such people. The point is, they've been selling insurance in preparation for a moment, and all dropped. A game of insurance. Yes. A situation where the more keeps rising. Since it's no, like a no refund insurance, Emerald Industries kept on making big profits, more than most obvious insurance. But conversely, the problem is the instant you trip the trigger, it would activate the effect of these options, the more drops. This causes a huge explosion, Mr. President. Well, that's not to be expected, then. Since they've been selling insurance, right? I mean, how. Xanaka was trying to save off his headache as he attempted to follow the conversation. As though he was treading through dark. With poor visibility, I address him coldly. Mr. President, what is our last resort option when everything would really go to hell? Huh, that's to activate the rotary. Yeah, ah! Yes. If we activate the rotary press to print tons of more whack notes, the value of more would have to drop. That's. but then, if we print more bank notes to save Emerald Industries, and such this means the very companies we're trying to say will suffer even bigger losses. Is that it? And what the hell? How is that even possible? And now we'll talk about how a moment of this worst killjoy is me. How to avoid this. Well, I said in a soft tone. Indeed. Worst killjoy of short selling is a moment where government intervenes. Of course, if Emerald Industries gets caught in a crisis, then it's foreseeable that government will step in. But we want to avoid it somehow. This is a trap made of huge option transactions, but pro pro probably serves one of two purposes in this whole scheme. Either to prevent the government from printing banknotes, or to practice it to nullify any such interventions. But it's highly probable the other party in this option transaction is someone who's taken part in the Emerald Industries buyout project. Hmm, I also share the same view on that. After all, the option trap worked so well, and causing an overkill because of the huge losses would be a problem for them too. They probably plan on cancelling the transaction if things go too far, and to keep the losses to a management level. Truly really impressive display ability. Was it really a man who planned that? Foreigners on par with a devil. But then, what do we do? What other options do we have? I don't know yet. What we can do. 
But I know what we have to do. We'd have to stop this whole uproar while avoiding Harold Rose and Emerald Industries falling into a bank run. While avoiding a depre depreciation of them all. <laughs> he laughed and put his hand to his face, his shoulders shaking as if he couldn't take any more. This is just like the Gordian knot, isn't it? What's going to be heard during a short sentence? Are you going to look for a legendary sword? Look and cut it in two. Marco's word, Gazanica barked. Where are you going to find such a thing? It seemed Gazanica had reached his limit. Ha! Ten minutes after you left, we got a call from Mua Wrench. They said that since they were aware of how rotten to a core they were, we even announced to find fine financing that we were trying to, push, trying to find someone to sell themselves to. We must have thought if they ended up bought to, like, a steal like ball stairs or tried to hold them too hard, we wanted to just put them a good word for them. And now somehow my government's become reliable. I'm so proud. Do you even have candidates to buy? We see that even every investor in the field is in a state of panic. And hiding their cash in drawers, right? So the only place we would have money over commercial banks? Some guard saving their virtuous customers, right? In terms of scale, it means a bank of a moon would be a good match. I have no clue as to how much they could sell themselves for. A sound choice. Have this comment from me. Gazanica heaved a huge sigh and Spoken a broken voice, about to cry. The situation must have reached a point where nothing more can be done. Everything we do is a haste. I want to turn on the rotary press and make it run. We will put an end to the whole thing. We'll literally put everything on a course towards the end. Satia. So we don't legally need to go for a parliament, we can do it whenever we want, right? Yes. The head director has disappeared. We have three remaining four directors are present. So by using your recommendation quota as president to force someone into a position, you clear a legal requirement for having the approval of more than half the attending directors. Right on. We just need to plug a wall and make it work right away. Let's plug and play for you. If you ask me, it'd be more like plug and pray. Nice. There's only one way out left. Required. The situation is desperate. Do this, and that will collapse. Do the other thing, and the other thing will break. It was a stray bottle lost in a china shop. No matter what you did, and how you did it, you would not avoid the problems. But this is really the last resort. If we go out and use it, nothing else will be the same anymore. Don't think that everyone will come to a price. The end result of a collapse on the surface doesn't change. We also have the option of playing without plugging in. Oh, you had to leave things in the whims of the market. How fitting of a liberalism of a lunar surface. That's what you call being con consistent, though and through. It seemed ironic as he chuckled, but of course I was also saying this as a joke. I would just be in it. Dogmatism. It's made clear by now that these guys won't be able to fix a mess on their own. Not doing anything is not an option. Which is why we have no other option but to think. I scored myself into speaking in a collected tone. Think until the very last moment. He said something like that in a movie, right? Glad that Wallace was laughing, frowned in obvious disgust. Would Wallace believe me if I told the current situation for the most part is caused by that movie? But I do think the most important thing in investment is knowing when to pull away. Indeed. I think we need to define a line between which we'll give up. In his printing banknotes means facing new problems. To be able to avoid present crisis is very important since at the very least it would help us buy time for people to flee to the lunar surface. Yeah, there's that problem too. I had someone run calculations for me, even if you orbit elevator at full activity. It'd take around one month to send everyone to the lunar surface back to Earth. Plus, this is not account for the capacity of a gravity training facility. We don't have tabs on anyone who is both born on a moon never been in high gravity environments, but it certainly can't accept them all at once. But I think we must prevent Emerald Industries from collapsing out of the blue. From failing in some way. In charge of both the circulation, of the atmosphere, and the temperature of a dome. This would cause the biggest space accident in history. Approaching things at this point of view, I pondered the idea of a place lunar surface went on existing because everyone assumed things would turn out fine. So where would we draw a line before surrendering? Zanica's question, naturally all glazed themselves, turned towards Wallace. The standard stock trading, the highest loss one can suffer happens at the moment when stocks bought to scrap paper. In short selling, since it's rise in stock price it becomes a loss, theoretically losses can be infinite. Consequently, in short selling, even so more in regular trading, being able to determine a moment to back out becomes important. Dr Wallace, the master of short selling, and king of pessimism, looked displeased as he spoke. What do you people 
thinking pushing such heavy responsibilities on a dying old man. Even if it failed, no one would be able to blame a dead man, would they? So it's true. All lawyers are scoundrels. I think that's a good note to end on, actually, isn't it?